So this is the third and final movement in the clock workouts. There's two previous videos which have got um, you know, movement one and movement two, and this movement three is called the core clock. So Gary, we're just really progressing on that theme that you've already spoken about, about how we can use the clock to access different movements, different dimensions, different to really dimensions. Rem remind our body on maybe what it's missing out on in our sort of one and two dimensional everyday life. Yeah. Well, this is, is, in essence, is identical to the shoulder clock workout, except we're just going to change the angle. So we're going to be doing it on the floor, yeah. um, which targets much more abdominal movement. And is, and, and is if, if I'm honest, the, the, how it was created was by taking a plank and this idea of testing ourselves to see how long we can survive in, in a plank, um, but adding movement to it. Um, and it was quite interesting because a single journey around this clock is probably going to take a little bit longer than most people could hold a plank. Yeah. So rather than holding still in one position, we're just going to enjoy the experience of yeah. multiple versions of that plank in, in this position. Yeah. But we'll be doing it with our knees on the ground because it's easier for mm -hmm. the majority of people to get started and also safer. Yeah, 100%. And then this is why we've decided to have the knees on the ground is because... You know, we want these movements um, to be accessible to as many people as possible. We don't want to put obstacles up in the way because so many people, young, old, middle-aged, can actually benefit from these movements. And so, Gary, what I'd love you to do is go through the movements. Start off, if you can, with your knees on the ground. The sort of um, the easiest possible version, I guess, of the core clock. Yeah. And again, as you say, very much like the shoulder clock that we have just filmed, um, it is about going out to 12 o'clock with, let's say you start with your right hands and you bring your right hand back and you go with your left hands and you just go around the whole clock face. And visit every clock point with both hands. And you'll let your body just follow, follow in the way that it wants to. And you really will get this experience of freedom, I think, in your body after you've done it. And as you say, you really find that your abdominals uh, get worked uh, in a really in a really nice way in this movement in a way that they possibly don't when you're doing the shoulder clocking Absolutely. at the wall. It's a really lovely addition. Really yeah. nice way to, to bring that. The so, so can I get you down, Gary, onto the mat to get going? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Gary, so maybe if you start with your right hand reaching out to 12 o'clock. And I think that's a really important point there as Gary does it. His fixed hand, which is near his body, is bending. It's not about being static. It's really about allowing that freedom. So it's at one o'clock now. Again, following with his left hand, it's a whole body movement. The spine is moving, um, the neck is moving, the abdominal muscles, the hips, everything's moving. It's really, really nice. So at three o'clock, the left arm, very much like on the shoulder clock, comes under. But again, do what feels comfortable to you. Allow the rest of your body to follow. That's four o'clock. Again, for four o'clock on the left hand, it's coming under. There's real movement there on the shoulder and the neck. Five o'clock there. And then I guess at six o'clock, which is coming up, it sort of goes between your legs and it's the back of your right hands followed by the back of your left hands. And again, he's just going to continue from that onto the other side now, again with the right hand. It's the back of his right hand going into seven o'clock. Yeah, eight. And then when we get to nine o'clock with his right hand, it's coming under. There's just this real beautiful fluidity in the body and movement from all these different muscles. This is not a static movement. It's really getting your body moving in three dimensions. 11 o'clock there. And then just finishing off again at 12 o'clock. Brilliant. Uh, you know, it always feels good <laughs> yeah. to, to do it myself uh, again. Um, look, for me, that really is uh, well, standing up a bit like when you, you're doing the shoulder clocks, how you feel that um, awareness. I mean, I don't particularly do these every day, so I get to get a sense of how that feels for me as well. Um, and for me, it's all about um, spinal mobility more than muscles. I'm very much concentrating on this position of the bones and their, and their shape. But So the shoulders feel open. The movements give our shoulders a chance, palm down, palm up, to experience those rotations we've looked at in other videos. Um, the reaches of the spine take them into side bends and twists and, yeah. and bends and extensions. 
So it's a huge amount of, of upper body mobility going in. And it's the core as well. There's a lot of, um, you know, it's a buzzword, isn't it? The core and core stability. But you it are is. working your core you are. in every you in are every plane. creating very specific demands on your core in very different <laughs> angles to what you're used to, which is all arguably going to augment that core's awareness, your brain's awareness of what the core can do. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's very much an abdominal muscle um, a set of muscles that are at play here. Yeah. Carrie, there are, aren't there a few progressions that we can do if people want to? You don't have to do progressions. Uh, I think that will actually get a lot, of, um, a lot of benefit if you just do it as it is written in the book, as Gary has just demonstrated there. But for people who are looking for those progressions, maybe we can just give them a few ideas. Can, can you perhaps just do a couple of them? And yeah. it's just progressively getting a little bit more challenging, right? Very simply, if I've started on that four-point position, with my hands under my shoulders. If I'd walk those hands forward, bring my hips forward over the, uh, in front of the knees, I'm gonna be in a more elongated position, already creating more demand on my core just to hold that position, and then continue the 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, one o'clock journey. Um, so I'm just gonna increase the load on the system. Um, and a second way, another way, up, I mean, ultimate way, you could keep edging out if you're yeah. towards that, but the ultimate is, is to, to go into the press-up position and move from there, um, reaching out towards the 12 o'clock with a with the bending elbow, lowering yourself towards the ground, coming back yeah. and exploring. Actually, I remember the very first course when I studied um, with you, Many years ago now, 2012, uh, 2012, yeah, you know, outside in the car park Athos, we were all doing this outside and it was, I remember thinking, wow, my body's just been put into all these amazingly new positions with a movement that's already quite familiar to me, mm. but I, did, I never really explored that movement and I think it is incredible to see all these different positions, you know, and again, using that, that clock idea, it's such a, it's just a simple way for us all to get and access more of those movements. The clock just, you know, we're all familiar with what it's a clock a nice is, way right? Organizing what is actually yeah. quite a chaotic movement. In fact. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but also, just the reaches across with the right arm and out with the left arm just creates different a sway in the spine, a yeah. twist in the spine, uh, an extension in the spine. So you, you really get to explore yeah, all of it. For sure. Yeah. So that was the third and final um, movement in that three movement sequence that we call the clock workout. Uh, you do have step-by-step -step instructions in the book, Feel Better in Five. These videos are meant to accompany that. Um, again, we won't experience pain in any of these movements. If you're feeling uncomfortable uh, and you think the pain is bothering you, perhaps see someone and actually try and understand why that's happening or limit the movement so you're not getting the pain in the short term. I find the clock workouts incredibly beneficial. I know many of my patients do, many of your clients and the people you teach have also fed that back to you. Well, like they are time efficient as well, which is the whole point of, of the book. Yeah. You can get a lot done in a short amount of time um, and with regularity, you'll get better at them. You'll, you'll find, well, muscles will respond, joint position will respond. I think you'll notice uh, benefits in your posture and your movement. But, but I also think people will start to find new movements for them that they think, oh, yeah, and what if I do that? How's that going to feel? And yeah. I start to explore their own body. There's no right or wrong there. Like, yeah. You can't do this movement wrong. Yeah. And I, I love that idea because we very much got this idea that this is how you do an exercise and the exercise can only be done this way. And, you know, we've almost given up the autonomy of our own bodies to other people. And I, I like the idea that this is here to give people a framework, but they can start to play around, you know, play, mm. have fun with movements rather than it being this sort of punishing sure. regime they have to stick to. And a big uh, subject in our podcast was about taking ownership of your own body. So exploring yeah. these positions, what they mean for you and how you can um, explore them better. If yeah, you for sure, Gary. And I would say, and I re really would reiterate, give it a try and see how you feel. Because I almost guarantee that you're going to feel completely different after doing these sort of um, clock workouts or all those three clock movements. And that's gonna be your motivation to come back and do it again actually because you're gonna feel the benefits. Don't do it because Gary said so or because I said so. You know, use your motivation and willpower at the moment to learn the movements, play around with them, and then see for yourself if you wanna continue. So, hope you enjoyed that video. Do let us know below if you've got any questions or any comments on the movements. And um, yeah, best of luck.